Good morning, Monday, February the 10th. We're glad you're watching Morning Express. It is time for our press review ahead of the way it is, which is our discussion uh, and analyzing the stories that have been dominating news headlines. But first, the standard newspaper today leads with the Hague trials. And it's all about Uhuru, Ruto, plans after Ocampo talks and Duale vows that Jubilee will probe Western diplomats and summon uh, Justice Philip Waki over former ICC prosecutors. Claims is the story that we will look at. It has the details on page six. Uh, but statements here, we have Ocampo. There were diplomats asking me to prevent Kenyatta or Ruto running. I said it's not my job. Duale here uh, quoted as having said six Kenyans suffered unthinkable torment just to ensure a certain politician can ascend to power. And up to President Ruto, the truth uh, lies and lies are now unfolding and with prayers from Kenyans, we will be set free. Also on the front page of the standard court jubilee plot showdown in parliament and rival Jubilee and Cord meet separately to strategize on their legislative agenda ahead of uh, National Assembly's reopening tomorrow. President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy uh, William Ruto will host the Jubilee Brigades this morning at State House, Nairobi, while opposition leaders, uh, former Prime Minister Odenga, and his co-principals, uh, former Vice President Musioka and Senator Moses Watangula, are in Naivasha. And more details of that report on page three. Also touched and highlighted on the front page of the standard is Mombasa family search for a man arrested in raid on Musa Mosque. That's in Masjid Musa. A family and human rights groups are demanding uh, and uh, that police produce a suspect they claim was arrested in last week's raid on the controversial Masjid Musa. They claim the man whose name they gave as Mr. Hamed Salim Ahmed cannot be traced at any police station in Mombasa. Uh, page two in the standard today talks about the budget tops agenda as MPs troop back to August House tomorrow uh, with only four months to end of the financial year. Treasury, Parliament and the Judiciary are expected to hand in their expenditure plans. So the making of the budget for the next financial year and the final approval of rules on how the six billion shillings fund for women and youth would be disbursed is top on the agenda of the National Assembly as MPs troop back to the House tomorrow after a two-month break. Also, a story that's on page four, there is a missing Uhuru advisor's short stint at State House, uh, and fresh details have emerged about a senior State House official who disappeared mysteriously uh, on that matter, even as detectives indicated investigations had hit a brick wall so far. And you can read more about uh, the missing uh, official and how long it has been and what the police are saying about the same. Also on that page, the U.S. tells foreign forces to leave South Sudan and that political crisis in South Sudan appears to be escalating after the United States ordered governments that have deployed their forces in South Sudan to withdraw or face dire consequences. Page six in the uh, standard is on that story that is the headline story on the Standard, Jubilee wants Ocampo claims probed and Duala says he will seek support of coalition's uh, uh, MPs in parliament to investigate alleged plot uh, to fix Uhuru and Rutan. Remember, that's where we're also basing our question of the day because he does want that list, uh, wacky list uh, envelope made public to be opened so that the contents therein are made known, the names of the other people alleged to have been perpetrators of the post-election violence 2007. 2008 and on page uh, 7 the ODM elections those coming up uh, 28th of this month delicate regional balancing ahead of ODM elections is the story here and process of cleaning up delegates register and going while well. strategists have been vetting aspirants Let's have a look at some of the sports stories inside the standard on favorite pitch back page in the standard and in gray claw defense in a thriller is what the uh, fever pitch is headlining today with and Ethiopia's uh, Michaela Kea submit to Leopards in Confed Cup. Also inside fever pitch, Rajani wins last Barclays golf circuit at Mudaiga 
and uh, Kenya overcomes Zambia in Volleyball World Championships qualifiers as well. All inside the standard fever pitch for you. We have the extra pullout and today inside the standard the extra is all about in God's name the story talks about the red flag that has been raised over biblical teachings at UK's Winners Chapel. Read more about that inside and the concerns raised there. The first ladies race is also inside the extra and teens and fizzy drinks abuse. How are they abusing those fizzy, fizzy drinks? Unveiling world's largest solar bridge. And what can only a Kenyan mom do? Find out all inside extra for you. And it is Monday and the standard gets, through, uh, gets you through the Monday blues with a crazy Monday uh, pullout as well. And today the headline is the wannabe Casanovas. So they're men who boast of fake sexual conquest to boost their egos. Yeah, they'll talk about all these things they can do or have done and hey. So a lie. Oyunga Pala also inside Crazy Monday, occupational hazards of Kenyan stardom. Some of the stories also inside the Crazy Monday in Kenya. Everything and everyone is a genuine fake. What a way to put that. And officious a fast that is the African state are some of the articles as well covered for you and written inside the Crazy Monday. To the Daily Nation. And today, the headline, Nairobi big winners as counties get 88 billion shillings. So that is the allocation to the counties, a total of 88B. And Nakuru, Kiambu, Machakos as well get more than 2 billion shillings each uh, to be among top beneficiaries. And Lamu gets least uh, countrywide. So Nairobi nationally has the highest allocation with 4.4 billion shillings, while Lamu has the lowest with 690 million shillings going to it. Uh, Turkana has the second highest after Nairobi, and you can read more about those figures on that story that continues on page uh, six. Also on the front page of the Daily Nation, the headline picture is the CAF Confederation Cup and AFC snatches crucial victory against Ethiopian rivals. And there you see the AFC Leopards fans cheer their team when it played against Ethi uh, Ethiopia's Defense SC during a CAF Confederation Cup preliminary match at the now National Stadium in Nairobi yesterday. The Kenya team defeated Defence 2-0. The goals were scored by team captain Martin Imbala Mbala. Also on the front page, Liverpool fan killed of a game and a fan of English football team Liverpool was stabbed to death, allegedly by an Arsenal supporter as they watched the match on TV at a bar in Meru on Saturday. So Liverpool hammered Arsenal. That was a big one. I remember just following that. Five goals to one in an upset, demolishing, complete. That sparked a fierce argument between the two fans watching the game at Maretta's Bar in Makutano area. And that just goes to show you uh, how emotive and initial football for some people is. But unfortunate and condolences to the family of the deceased. Page two, teachers uh, have uh, d defend the fees increase. Remember, there's been the story about schools and the increment of school fees. And other teachers are saying that it's not in the purview of the head teachers. It's just not them to blame that before this uh, school fees is increased, there's consultation among stakeholders, including the parents. And so this has seen a rare show of unity between Nat and Cupet, who are absolving school heads and blame state taxes over those increments being witnessed in schools. Uh, building of NSSF complex resumes is on page three in the Daily Nation today and the construction of the 40-story Hazina Trade Center Towers in Nairobi has started and the China International Kenya, the contractor for the center estimated to cost 7.1 billion shillings, uh, has already moved to the site and started to prepare for the construction. Wambora Alster probe starts, uh, that is starting today, page four in the Daily Nation. We have the Senate committee set to hear uh, from Embu County Assembly, the governor and his deputy from 10 a.m. Uh, this morning. They will be listening to that and it will be to determine uh, whether in fact the uh, county assembly members acted in accordance to the law and whether in fact the governor and his deputy are uh, abusing office and should be removed as the some of those county assembly members have claimed. 
Jubilee denies meddling in ODM polls is a story also on that page and on page five Cord meets over MPs scorecard in the house so both camps we have Cord and also Jubilee just meeting more so today ahead of National Assembly reopening tomorrow to just tighten up their strategies in the house their agenda what it is they plan to do and achieve uh, that will be big ahead of the opening tomorrow page six breaks down that headline story including the budgetary allocation and this money the 88 billion shillings that has been released by treasury to the counties um is for development so this uh, good news for ordinary monanchi and so there's a list here that breaks down each county and how much uh, they are getting. Remember, Lamu has the list allocation, uh, and of course, um, Nairobi receiving the highest uh, from that kitty, and uh, Turkana second highest. Um, allocation hunger is covered on page eight and nine race against time to save learning in farming hit regions read more about that in the daily nation on the back page is fbi doing tests on terrorist bodies and state department official confirms the remains are being analyzed and that is the the United States has confirmed that it is analyzing bodies believed to be those of terrorists who attacked the Westgate shopping mall, killing 67 people and injuring over 200 others. So a State Department official spoke after Chief of Defense Forces Julius Karangi said the Federal Bureau of Investigation took custody of the remains of four terrorists who carried out that massacre. The Star newspaper, anti raila rebellion intensifies and the Star is talking about that rebellion happening in his backyard in Nyanza. So South Nyanza leaders plotting to break away. We'll look at that story in a short while. It's covered on page six in more details. But still on the front page, Ocampo denies coaching witnesses. And you have the former ICC prosecutor Luis Moreno Ocampo. Uh, denying those allegations and Ocampo said uh, he's, uh, d he did thorough investigations and found uh, evidence against the President Kenyatta and Deputy President William Ruto. Details of that are on page 28 and 29 in the Star today. Also on the front page of the Star, MPs entitled to current salaries. That is what uh, National Assembly Speaker uh, Justin Muturi is saying. And he has... Uh, said that MPs will continue to earn their current salaries. Uh, Muturi said he was surprised by the High Court decision, uh, uh, the High Court decision which purported to rule that the MPs cannot set their pay, which already uh, is an issue that's being handled by SRC, and he's quoted here as saying that the High Court's decision was misplaced and made in ignorance of the law. Also, Ngunjiri Wambogo has written an article on Bensuda's judicial fraud on victims. Read about that inside the start today. Other stories covered, of course, is the reopening of the National Assembly. We've talked about that, which happens tomorrow. And on page three, you see it at there on your screen. States built to buy 390 acres for new railway. So the government has begun acquiring land on the Mombasa Nairobi Railway uh, rail corridor for the Standard Gauge Railway. The National Land Commission has, not, uh, has notified 27 landowners of intentions to buy their land. And on page four, God denies a dropping case against Shebesh, that's the Nairobi woman representative. So an assault case against the rep, um, a biosecurity guard has taken a new twist as the watchman denied withdrawing it and that going against earlier claims. On page six, that story that headlines the start today, rebellion against ODM, Raila Odenga and Nyanza intensified over the weekend, the star is reporting, when a group of unhappy, uh, unhappy leaders who are unhappy with Raila's leadership uh, agreed to strategize to break away from ODM ahead of 2017. They're planning to form a new party, which they want to call the United Democratic Movement, UDM. And this also is said to be happening as the Prime Minister is alleged to have been booed in uh, Nyanza as well over the weekend as his support there uh, and the rebellion is seen to rise. Three Shabab suspects arrested in Mandera, page 7, and police in Mandera arrested on Saturday night, three Al-Shabab 
suspects that among other stories those among other stories in the star finally the people this monday has the headline as mps want waki forced to reveal names in envelope and remember share with us your views that's our question of the day do you think do you support those calls to have those uh, the waki envelope made public those names released to members of the public so we have here ICC cases. Majority leader Aidan Duale says Jubilee side to table motion seeking to make, op uh, to make open report on all key post-election violence suspects that Justice Waki handed to Moreno Campo. Also on the front page, uh, Kenyan Arsenal fan kills Liverpool rival. That story we mentioned earlier. So pair disagreed over outcome of Saturday EPL match where the Reds beat the Gunners 5-1. And the January was, page 46 has Google research shows why Kenyans hate fast calendar month. So it's called in January. Uh, also there is Uhuru Ruto convinced me to forgive Kidero. And Nairobi woman rep uh, Shebesh has revealed that President Kenyatta and his deputy convinced her to forgive the Nairobi governor over last year's incident at City Hall where she was slapped by the governor. And as 7 a.m. sharp on this 10th day of February, those are the stories that are making headlines in the local dailies today. Do grab yourself a copy of the standard newspaper. Of course, remember, there is Crazy Monday in there for you as well as the extra pullout that is uh, focusing on what's happening with that UK church, the Winners Chapel, and the concerns about the practice and the doctrine there. To the roads, uh, how they're looking this morning. Matri Roots on Twitter has good updates. And uh, let's see what people are saying. Uh, no Mbasava buses to town. Avenue, been on this queue for over 30 minutes. That's at Nyayo Estate in Mbakasi. Uh, so a bit of an issue there with getting transport to town. And traffic on Sika Road starts at Safari Park. There's been an accident at TRM, though not affecting traffic flow. Police are at the scene, one of uh, the motorists there saying, Jeff Miner. Uh, Jogorod at this minute is worse. Uh, Jami Mianzia Hamza, somebody says. And anyway, Jam on Sika Road starts at Safari Park. Another tweet there. NHC to Timo is supposed to be three minutes, and not 24 minutes. That's not smooth. Uh, so one of those people stranded and taking a long time to get to where they want to this morning. Uh, if parking attendants were to start working early in Langati Road, they would probably hit their target by 8 a.m. It's a parking lot on Langati Road. Sika Road as well, quite a number of updates. And because of that accident reported there, uh, near TRM but it is said police are at the scene and that it is not affecting flow. Ngong Road as well from risk course is smo uh, moving smoothly so that is good news for the folk coming from that side of town. To our question of the day just a quick reminder ahead of our short break do you support calls to make the Waki list public? That is what Jubilee members some of them at least have said they seek to have um, the uh, judge uh, Philip Waki forced or made to appear before parliament in order to uh, have uh, a session with him to address some of the concerns raised in the recent remarks that are coming from The Hague. This as the fate of the case of the president still remains unclear, a story that we continue to watch for you even as that um, session in The Hague continues both sides expected to address the court and make their submissions with the defense uh, of course calling for the president's case to be dropped and prosecution insisting they just need a bit more time to put their house in order 702 a.m benjamin dollar tony gashoka are in studio so in the next hour we are on the way it is we're discussing and analyzing the stories that have been dominating news headlines we look forward to you being part of that conversation stay tuned KTN Morning Express takes a short break now.